Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be trying to create some sort of a habitable system around a black hole using Universe Sandbox. Let's find out if it's possible and welcome to What The Math. So Sean Raymond, the astrophysicist living in France uh, that has been posting really interesting blogs where he creates hypothetical solar systems and star systems, uh, is at it again. He decided to create a hypothetical system with a black hole, a very, very massive, super massive black hole at the center that he then tried to add to his list of ultimate uh, solar systems. And here he actually went as far as saying you can have up to a million planets in a habitable zone. Let's see how he did it. He took a, a supermassive black hole that's about a million masses of the sun. And he then uh, started by placing a few suns around it. So he uh, first placed the sun relatively close and then realized that it just kind of sort of uh, breaks down and turns into a ring because of the tidal effects. So that clearly didn't work. And he decided to place stars a little bit farther away. So for his next experiment, he took uh, several suns, specifically I believe it was nine, and placed them in a relatively stable orbit at around 0.5 astronomical units uh, away from the central black hole. I'm doing this very roughly here. So uh, some of them might actually become kind of unstable, but it sort of looked like this. And here, if I actually make it run, this is what we'll see. So there's nine stars, nine suns around the central black hole, producing um, enough radiation to have a habitable zone at a distance. Oh, wow. This is a lot brighter than I expected. At a distance that's about um, three times as far away as a normal uh, habitable zone. In other words, it was at a distance of about three astronomical units. So starting from somewhere around here, where is, yeah, there we go. Three astronomical units up to about uh, three or maybe four astronomical units, you can actually have habitable planets, habitable Earth specifically. And because we're actually orbiting a supermassive black hole, the distance between these planets can also be much, much, much less than in his original uh, system where he had to place planets at a distance of about 12 hill spheres or um, just over 18 uh, million kilometers away from each other. So in this system, you can actually have a single ring with up to, um, I believe, 4,200 planets. So you can have 4,200 planets right here. Now, I'm gonna see if I can actually place that many. I don't think my computer can survive, but we'll try. So uh, let's place one ring. And unfortunately, it's kind of hard to see it, but it's basically there. I think I can maybe select all of this. Yeah, there we go. Uh, there's that ring uh, that represents those 4,000 planets, super, super tiny planets that he basically tried to create hypothetically around this black hole. Now, the other thing is that you can have several rings here and there's up to about 700 rings possible in this new habitable zone. So if you have 700 rings, 4,200 planets in each of them, that's close to about 3 million planets you can place in this hypothetical habitable zone around a central black hole. Now, all of this sounds wonderful, of course, uh, but there's a lot of quirks to work out in this particular system. Well, and unfortunately, I won't be able to simulate this because my computer can't really handle this, but uh, we'll, we'll try our best. So first of all, let's uh, take a look at um, what's happening with our suns here. I think some of them are still falling apart. Yeah, so this is still not a stable region of space for these um, suns to, to be in. We need to place them a little bit farther away from the central black hole. So let's see if we can create Suns. Okay, it, it kind of worked, but they once again fell apart. So I need to place them even farther. Even 0.6 astronomical units is creating a lot of tidal uh, effects here where the suns don't actually last very long. So let's start from scratch. We're going to place a 1 million mass black hole in the center. We are now are going to also place uh, 9 suns. So let's do this. 9 suns right here uh, with a total 
mass of, once again, nine suns at a distance of about one astronomical unit, where I think they should be okay and won't fall apart. And uh, we're also going to make this a ordered assignment. And let's try this. Okay, here we go. Here are these nine suns in a very, very uh, stable orbit around the black hole. These should not really fall apart. I think they will be pretty stable. Although, wait a second. Nope, my bad. They are also falling apart. The tidal effects here are really, really strong. This also means that um, it's going to be really hard for me to maintain the stability of the system. But let's just go with this for now. So there are the nine suns. And now using the same technique, we can maybe place a few planets in the uh, hypothetical ha habitable zone. So this is how we'll do it. Same thing, except that we're going to change this to, let's say, I don't know, like 30 planets uh, that are going to be 30 masses of Earth. And this is about four of you. And there they are. So every moon here that you see is essentially an Earth-like planet with a mass of Earth. So we just need to go in here and change this composition to give it a little bit of water. And let's just, let's do one of them just so that we can simulate what all of this will look like. So here is that moon. It's exceptionally bright because there's so many suns in the sky. And we're going to try to change it until it basically gets some liquid water on the surface here, which means that we might need to also give it a little bit of atmosphere just to see if this works. And, huh, it seems to have ice on the surface, but no liquid water. And that's probably because my suns actually fell apart and are not producing enough heat. So once again, we have to go to the uh, planning stage and try this again. So, so far, this is not working very well. Unlike the blog post that he wrote, where he simulated this with 0.5 astronomical units, I think even with one astronomical unit of distance for the sun, they, will, they won't really stay stable. They will actually still fall apart. Let's try a slightly different scenario, scenario number three that he mentions in the post, uh, which basically does the following. It, he takes a black hole, once again, one million mass black hole, and places 36 suns farther away, at a distance of about 6 AU, and here, basically, we're going to have our suns on the outside of the system. And this might actually be much, much more stable. And these are correct size, correct mass. They look like suns. So this should be slightly more stable. There's 36 of them. And on the inside here, we'll place the actual planets at a distance of, well, I guess somewhere right here. So this is maybe about four to five of AU. We're going to place a bunch of Earths because the actual habitable zone here looks very, very interesting. It's, it's like a pattern that uh, you don't really see very often. I'm going to place two rings here. One is going to be at a distance of about 4 AU with 42 planets. And one at a distance of about 5 AU with about the same number of planets. Oh, and I also want to add another layer at 3 AU. And let's just actually add one at 2 AU and one at 1 AU. Because I really just want to compare these in terms of the temperature they receive and in terms of everything else that might be uh, happening here. And so let's see what we've actually created here. So we have stars on the outside, we have planets on the inside, and basically one, two, three, four, five layers. The first two layers here, the temperature is a little bit too high, even though according to the simulation, they should be just outside of the habitable zone. The reality is that because there are so many stars here, uh, the first two layers basically make it uninhabitable, too, too hot. Even the third layer, assuming that there is actually some atmosphere, so let's just, let's give it some atmosphere to see what happens, uh, would most likely create unlivable conditions and make it way too hot yet again. So as soon as we add some atmosphere, the greenhouse effect basically puts it sort of in the unlivable conditions again, too hot. What about this next layer? This is at a distance of 2 AU from the black hole. And here, things get a little bit more interesting. So here, we can actually maybe create something that's going to be very similar to Earth. And we might be able to even terraform this moon. 
Now, currently, it looks very, very strange. I think it's actually filled with water or something else. I'm not entirely sure what this layer is on top here, but we are going to give it some water because we want it to be a world with the liquid water. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like it got liquid water, but it's once again a little bit too hot. The temperature here is 42 degrees Celsius already, mostly because of the atmosphere I've given it. And the last layer at 1 AU from the black hole, which is right here, is probably the layer where we can create habitable planets. So this is actually the habitable zone that uh, Sean Raymond tried to create as well. And here with uh, basically just a little bit of atmosphere and relatively similar conditions to Earth, the temperature is still pretty high. It's actually still climbing. Now, why is this happening? Well, I think one of the reasons is the same reason why we can't really see the surface here, because the stars are shining at this planet from all directions. In other words, there is never a night on this planet. There's almost no way for it to cool down and it's constantly being bombarded by radiation from all directions. So th this planet has no night, no way to cool down. It's always getting hotter and is basically increasing in temperature. I might be able to place it a little bit closer to the black hole and eliminate this, maybe making it a little bit cooler, but I don't think it's going to survive there due to the tidal effects. The other thing about this particular planet is that it's currently moving at a speed of about one tenth of the speed of light. In other words, it actually is getting some dilation effects. The time on this planet uh, moves slightly slower than it does on normal Earth. And if you were to do the calculations, you would discover that uh, for every hundred years, you actually basically uh, lose about two months of your life. Now, it's not a super big time dilation, but it's still measurable enough. But because we're moving at 10% of the speed of light, which is a pretty high speed, it means that we cannot actually easily escape this orbit. We can escape the planet, but we'll never be able to go to other planets here. We'll never be able to leave the system because we'll need ridiculously high speeds for us to actually uh, change orbits. And lastly, and this is probably the biggest problem in the system, the tidal effects. The tidal effects here are so high which doesn't really show you much here, but they're so much higher than they are on Earth that you would constantly have tsunamis, earthquakes, volcano eruptions, and a lot of other problems here that Earth doesn't experience as much. And eventually this planet might even start falling apart, unless it's tidally locked. And if it is tidally locked, it would be actually be stretched quite dramatically and would be pointing toward the black hole and would also spin way too fast which of course could give it a higher magnetosphere, but also possibly create some other problems that I'm not really able to think of right now. And a single orbit here takes uh, something like eight hours or nine hours around this black hole, meaning that a year here lasts for nine hours. There's never a night. So the seasons and the day night cycle is completely out of whack and really, really difficult to imagine and also to survive on this uh, particular object. I wanted to actually place Earth here just to see how it fares with these conditions. And once again, Earth for some reason got the same effects as the other planets did. Uh, but in terms of climate, let's, let's see if anything actually changes here. So we're going to give it some time to adjust itself. And let's see what happens to temperature. And as you can see, yeah, temperature started skyrocketing almost right away. So that means that even Earth in this particular situation would not be dealing with uh, these conditions very well. As you can see, it orbits around the black hole really fast. It's receiving sunlight from pretty much every direction. There's never night. There's never any season. It's just one super hot conditions here. So in between the constant heat, the tidal effects, the fact that there is time dilation, and uh, possibly also the fact that a single asteroid coming from the outskirts here, colliding with the planet would most likely destroy the entire planet, uh, means that this is not really the habitable conditions we would want to have. Basically, if something comes from the outside of the black hole and then collides with one of these planets, it will most likely be colliding with them at relativistic speeds. So like even at 0.1 light speeds, let's just try with this moon number 14, at 0.1 light speeds, an asteroid 
uh, would most likely create a tremendously large disaster on the surface here. And any kind of a tiny asteroid would still produce enough energy to constantly heat up the atmosphere to the point where this planet would be always ultra, ultra hot. There's a lot of things here that are not really as easy to imagine as they would be on a normal planet. And as you can see, this tiny asteroid that I just collided completely destroyed this planet almost instantly. So definitely not a place where we can easily have a so-called habitable zone. Now, all in all, these scenarios are definitely fun to read and to imagine, and this would probably make a pretty cool science fiction book, but the science behind this is so complex and there are so many factors involved that just kind of saying that I can place a million planets in a habitable zone around a black hole without any concerns uh, and any potential issues is just not that simple. So you do need to actually take a lot of these things into consideration. Other than that though, this is actually kind of cool that you can create these in Universe Sandbox and I would actually even like to maybe recreate some of this stuff in Space Engine just to see what it really looks like. Because in this simulation, if you were to actually place millions of planets together, they would be really, really close to each other and a single planet uh, would be only approximately 30 to 40,000 kilometers away from each other. In other words, you would always have these really large planets um, in your night skies about 40 times the size of the moon. And this would be a pretty awesome thing to imagine. So maybe we'll try this in Space Engine sometime in the future. For now though, that's all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to try to recreate uh, Sean Raymond's new creation, a black hole of million Earths. Didn't really work as well, and there's definitely a lot of problems in the system, but it's a cool scenario to imagine. Anyway, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. Let's explore the black hole and finish this video right here. Space out, and as always, bye bye.